Good evening, everybody. My name is Bert Dicht. I am Vice President of Membership uh, for the National Space Society. And on behalf of Larry Ahern, Vice President of Chapters, I'd like to welcome you to our Space Forum this evening, Eyewitness to Launch Operations, Highlights of 2021, and What's Ahead in This Year. So we're glad you can join us. Uh, I, again, I always like to say thank you for joining our Space Forums, our series. This is our second one of the year. And I always like to do a quick introduction on uh, the agenda and also some Space Forum etiquette. So we'll discuss some etiquette, just a few quick announcements, then talk about what's coming up next in terms of our Space Forums and Town Halls. And we'll get right into the program and then we'll close for the evening. So as always, in terms of our virtual etiquette, if you'd like to submit a question, uh, please use the Q&A function. It's best because it goes right to the panelists and it's easy to pull those questions out to ask. There were a number of questions that were submitted beforehand, so we'll certainly try to get to as many as we can. I know our speakers have a, quite a bit to present tonight, so we're gonna cover quite a bit of uh, area. Uh, also feel free to use the, the chat function, but I encourage you to be respectful of the panelists and audience because everyone can see that. You can put the question into the chat and we'll certainly try to get to that. Uh, and it is best to view the session in speaker mode. That way, whoever is speaking can be highlighted. So I like to always say, uh, please give to our cause if you're enjoying the programming like this, these space forms, town halls. Uh, we encourage you to make a donation to support the National Space Society. Uh, our members and our donors are doing an amazing job and we really appreciate the support over this past year. And it's allowing us to do a lot of great things and we wanna continue that into 2022. Uh, I will post the, uh, the link in the chat a little later so you'll be able to take a look at that. But again, thank you in advance for giving to our cause. Also, please feel free to uh, complete the post space form survey. It only takes a few minutes. Uh, it's anonymous and your feedback is really crucial in helping us plan uh, future events. And we thank you for doing that in advance. So next uh, up is a town hall. And just to remind the people that everyone, the, the difference between the space form and town hall, the space forms cover technical uh, topics related to uh, the settlement of space and the space program and space history. Uh, the town halls are our internal programming, talking about what's going on in the National Space Society, uh, could be our benefits, could be our programs and so on. And we're gonna do a membership update on the 10th of February, two weeks from tonight. Uh, we're gonna have members of the membership committee and also other society leaders. And we're gonna be talking about some of the things that are new, uh, and some of the things you can look forward to to get the most out of your membership. We haven't done one in a while and we think it's good to update it. I can tell you that we are planning some other great uh, events and great speakers coming up late February and into March and into April. So look forward to more of that as we move forward. So now it's my pleasure uh, to get us right into the program. And let me just do a very, very quick introduction of our speakers tonight. So. Uh, Jean is uh, a member of the famous So Sisters. Uh, she worked for the United Space Alliance and actually was responsible for fabricating, uh, installing, and, and testing uh, the thermal protection system uh, of the space shuttle. So, and again, they became famous as the So Sisters. And that's actually translated into a lot of things that Jean does today. She's a docent at the uh, uh, Space Shuttle Atlantis exhibit. Uh, she does tours, she does presentations, and currently she's part of the media and uh, covering uh, these launches as you're going to see today for Space Up Close. Uh, Ken, Dr. Ken Kramer is our, a research chemist. He's a space science journalist, a photo, you know, a, a speaker, and he's the founding editor of Space Up Close. And Gene and Ken have been doing an amazing job uh, documenting and recording uh, some space flights, and you're, you're going to see that uh, today. Uh, and Ken has a long career in, in, in the industry, 
and it's translated into him being an expert and sought out speaker uh, for uh, media uh, when anything's happening in space. So we're really glad to have them today. It's really going to be a, a fabulous, interesting presentation. And it's my pleasure to turn it over to Gene and Ken. Gene and Ken, it's all yours. Thank you for having us. This okay. is quite an honor to be asked. So I guess we should share our screen. That sounds good. There we go. <laughs> and uh, so let's do that. I love it right. when technology works. Oh. Technology <laughs> works. It's been a very hectic day. Here we go. Um, because we were supposed to have a launch today. And that got scrubbed only at the last minute, but we still have to go through all of that, doing remotes and doing the launch. So been very hectic. So um, thank you for inviting us. Uh, yeah, we're going to talk about some uh, uh, eyewitness to launch operations, which is not just here at Kennedy. Many, many. I've only been here a few years. I'm living in uh, New York and New Jersey most of my life. So um, I have to come down here and I've been to many NASA centers. Um, anyway, I was a research scientist. I'm retired now. Now we have space up close. So here we're going to go through a lot of things today, uh, flip through them quickly. And this is all an experiment because we've never done a joint talk like no, this. And no. our buddy Bert, he gave us a real challenge about a week <laughs> and a half ago. <laughs> oh, but we did it. We did it. <laughs> come up with a come up with a talk I had to create from scratch. Okay. But that's okay. It, it but I like challenges. Like one of my one of my uh, JPL friends. If it's not impossible, it's not worth doing. Mark Raymond, Dr. <laughs> Mark Raymond. So this, we've been literally working on this since the last second because since he invited us, we had four launches. Okay. Yeah. And yeah. we have to work on all of that and then come up with a talk from scratch. So what we're going to do? We're going to talk about human spaceflight that you can see. Let me see. Can you guys see this thing? This mouse. We can see the mouse, yes, Ken. Good. Okay, so we're going to talk about human spaceflight, going to the moon, commercial crew. Uh, we'll, and we'll, we will hand off back and forth to one another. It might get a little clunky because we've never done this before, but we'll do the best we can and just bear with us. Then we'll talk about robotic missions because I talk about human spaceflight and robotic missions. And that's mostly what I covered, Webb and Mars and Lucy. And then we're going to come back to uh, how do you, where, how and where do you go see a launch? So. We're going to present all of that yeah. and that at the end so we're going to achieve orbital velocity and at the end i promise you that booster is going to come back and do a, a, a precision guided landing back here at the gate <laughs> and we're all going to survive all right so uh and also i want to thank uh nasa i got to thanks a, a number of people a number of organizations because we couldn't see any of this stuff uh without nasa so we're eternally grateful to nasa we're eternally grateful to the space force it used to be the Air Force, now it's the Space Force. I wanna thank SpaceX because we get to see these things. Without their permission, we can't see anything, all right? So I wanna thank ULA, SpaceX, Northrop Grumman, Lockheed Martin, Aerojet Rocketdyne, maybe a few people I missed. And I also wanna thank the various people at the various centers, NASA, NASA Goddard, NASA Michoud, NASA Stennis, here at the Kennedy Space Center. Uh, so we've seen a lot of things at a lot of different places. And because I do outreach, NASA's nice to me and lets me see a lot of things. And I participate in the briefings. So, uh, okay, so now we're gonna move on to the slides. So just, just really quick, um, we're gonna be talking about inside, but also outside. And here, sometimes you show up and look at that. You see that? You see that thing there? That is a Falcon 9 booster. And guess what? It's just lifted off again, the crane yeah. just is, taking it off as we got there in the port. Sometimes you sit there for hours and nothing happens. And other times it's happening right in front of your eyes and you got to react real quick. So there's a, a recovered booster being lifted off the drone ship that just came in. Uh, here's where we met at GOES um, and uh, GOZAR. Who did you meet at GOZAR, Gene? It was Al Roker. It was a uh, GOZAR was a, but probably at the time, the most detailed and most, uh, most technical um, weather satellite. And so I met Ken at, uh, when I was uh, escorting the photographers there and I met Al Roker there. So that was an honor. And there we have the Atlas in the right in back of us. And the, the, another GOES, GOES T is gonna launch March, uh, March 1 mm -hmm. right now. So yes, that's the most advanced weather satellites there are. So then here we are back in the port at night. And the point is, there's a lot you can see as the public 
you don't have to be inside as media all the time. There's so much you can see on the outside too. And that's what we, we hope to convey with you. Another booster with its landing legs deployed. And, uh, and you can see the dreaming, uh, the steaming dro uh, recovery ship Doug there off, off, off to the left named after uh, Doug, Doug Hurley, Hurley and, and, and Bob, Bob Benkin from Demo 2. Those are new recovery ships. So here we are back at the Atlas about a month ago. <laughs> <Always> there. <laughs> and then here we are at, um, I hope you guys can see, can you guys see the top of the screen where it says T3? Oh, I don't think so. Can yes, you can. That? Yes, okay, because I can't see it. Okay, T3, this is important. This is like last week, one of the four launches mm -hmm. that we had to go to and cover while you gave us this invitation. So T3, Transporter 3, but you know, I'm thinking about this too. It's like Terminator 3 too, because guess what? Elon Musk, right? He This was small sat, 105 small sats on the inside the nose cone there. And there are all of these companies, a number of them trying to launch small sats and make money off of it. And like I say to when I do in these media interviews, you know what? They got to compete with SpaceX too, because SpaceX is driving these costs down. So you know, they do small sats and cube sats too, and there were 105 on there. So uh, t Musk is going to terminate his competition if they are not competitive, reliable, and <laughs> robust. That's the point of that. So here we are again last week, two launches last week, that one and, and this Atlas that launched uh, um, the communications uh, a military uh, situational awareness satellite. Uh, and then I do a lot of, uh, I do a lot of um, interviews a space up close. I'm a professional scientist, retired now, but I do a lot of interviews and um, you can see them here for all the local networks as well as national interviews, BBC, uh, as part of Space Up Close. And now uh, let me pass it on to Jean to describe a little bit about, about what she does. Okay, this is me um, in our famous little bunny suit that we had to, that happens to be inside of Discovery. But where I'm standing next to where you see the black marble, uh, Space View Park, which is right on the river on Titusville. It's part of the American Space Museum. They honor sh uh, space shuttle workers, and my name is up there, and it's very nice to be up there. It's a beautiful park. It's a beautiful location. Right by the arrow, right. Yeah. Okay, and what's this, Jean? Oh, that's a tribute to the um, shuttle program. That's a beautiful statue, too. And right from here is where you can see a lot of launches actually just a few feet away from this, and that's that's what we're going to get into. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you worked on the shuttle, and now what do you do? I, I'm a docent, as, as, as Bert said earlier, and there's the um, so, so Sister patch, because we have our own official patch, and that's me in front of Atlantis, and Ken took that shot of me, and I always say, yes, indeed, I do own this place, because that's the pose I say, or I, I, I own the place. <laughs> It's my favorite place to be. And that, that is the Atlantis Pavilion, right? Yes. So Atlantis is located inside there. The visitor complex. So um, the first topic we want to talk about is the Day of Remembrance. And I want to say a few things about, about, about safety, because I've worked in the chemical industry. And there's not much difference with the rocket industry, OK? Um, because we got to come up with processes that are reliable, robust, and repeatable. And 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 because lives are on the line, and Apollo One happened because mistakes were made. Mm -hmm. So you have to be ever vigilant. We have to be. We have. We we can't ever think that just because we performed in the past, it's like like financial things that that the future is guaranteed because it's not in space. You're always at the knife edge. When I'm working in the lab, uh, you know, if I if I turn a valve the wrong way, I could blow myself up. And I've been. Um, I've been in lab situations. I had friends. One guy lost a finger. I've seen explosions, uh, chemical fires where I worked. And you know what? I've seen two rockets blow up too. And I never want to see that again. It's horrible. It's absolutely horrible. So we have to be ever vigilant of safety. Okay. You can't ever let up. Once you think ah, it's easy and it's safe, People think it's like flying on an airplane, going to space. It's not, and it's not going to be like that for a long time. So we need to be taking care uh, that we follow our procedures and that we're always safe. So, Gene, why don't you describe this uh, this scene? Because today is the Day of Remembrance, right? 55th anniversary. So what are we seeing here? Well, first of all, the Day of Remembrance is something that they do at Kennedy Space Center. It's at the always held the fourth Thursday of January because unfortunately we have Apollo 1 anniversary today. Tomorrow will be our, our anniversary date for losing Challenger. And on February 1st, our anniversary of losing Columbia. 
So we have uh, commemorative benches that are out there. This is at pad four. We had the uh, Delta Heavy in the background that Ken and I were taking pictures uh, during the launch. And so we, we, we consider that hallowed ground. It, it's just beautiful there. It's peaceful, sad, of course, but uh, we're fortunate enough that we're able to take photos from there. Yeah, and that's the launch mount. There's very little bit of it left. And there's this, this nice little pavilion here to, de to describe the astronauts. So today you went to the day, the, the day of remembrance. We worked on this talk to the last minute. So tell us what we're seeing here. I went to the remembrance ceremony this morning and I wanted to keep our, our uh, presentation up to date. So I literally took this shot. This is probably taken around, oh, around 11 o'clock this morning. <laughs> So this is a, a, the, a, 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 a memorial mirror, sorry, that we have at Kennedy Space Center. And um, you can see the flowers at the bottom because they have a, when you go up there uh, after the, the ceremony, they give everybody a flower and you can interweave it into the fence uh, in front of the mirror. Yeah, so if you ever have a chance, you want, you want to come and, and, and see that and be part of the the memorial, the public can see that, and especially they can go after after the public uh, after the NASA ceremony is done. You can walk up there and you can put a flower right into the mm -hmm. into the into the wall right there, and you see this when you're driving in. So that's the uh, astronaut mirror memorial, and and what's here we see the names of the crews, right? Mm -hmm. And I happened to get a reflection shot of the flag, and you, uh, you can see this is for Apollo One at the top and the bottom, of course is um, Challenger in the bottom left-hand corner and Columbia's crew on the right-hand side. Right, that's a close-up of them. And right across from that, what do we have? Yeah, there's a Dignity company that makes the memorial. So that's right across from the mirror. And it's a beautiful plaque to honor to all the astronauts that we lost. As well as not just the three crews, but other astronauts, other astronauts that too. were died, Elliot C and, and Bass mm -hmm. and, uh, and, and others. So, um, Again, we have to be vigilant of safety because if we're not, then um, we will have a bad day and we don't want to have a bad day. So now we'll move on to the main, the main topic of our presentation. Uh, we'll, well, we'll move on to the presentation, um, but we can't ever forget. We can't ever forget those who, who sacrifice so that the rest of us can reach the stars. Uh, very important. So here we have uh, SLS, our first topic. We're going to talk in some detail about this. Uh, we've we've seen all of these components, and we're going to show most of them to you, starting with Orion up here in, in the left, and it's Project Artemis, mm -hmm. as you probably know. And who was very instrumental in that was Bill Nelson. He is senator, three-term senator at the from time Florida, from, Florida. from Florida. I met him. Well, I met him many times, but I I met him <laughs> over the summer. One day, the you know the press site has been closed over COVID. Okay because we all have to be vigilant. Get your vaccine, get boosted. I worked in the pharmaceutical industry and I always say this, no excuse not to get it. Please get the vaccine and please get boosted. You need to respect your fellow human being. All right, so do it, please. And uh, so anyway, Nelson was instrumental in, in, in getting, uh, you know, Artemis going after consolation was canceled. He was instrumental with the Republican Senator Kay Bailey Hutchinson and others they worked in a bipartisan way because that's what science, public health has to be. It has to be non-political and it has to be bipartisan. So this is what Orion looks like actually when it comes from Mashoud. And we're gonna take you to Mashoud in a little while, but that's the pressure show. And there's a uh, Bridenstine. We're gonna talk to him, uh, him too, the predecessor to, to Nelson. But Nelson's a really great guy. Mm -hmm. We met him uh, quite a few times mm -hmm. at, at, various, uh, at various functions. So here's a close up of, uh, Artemis from about a year and a half ago when it was complete, but they still had to put their covering on it. So we're going to talk to you about the, the core stage and the engines, and there's the mobile launcher. And, you know, the goal now is hopefully we'll have boots on the moon by 2025, originally 2024. That was a little aggressive. I liked, I liked it move forward from 2028. That's so far in the future that, that the politicians will never fund it. Because as you know, no bucks, no buck Rogers. And we got to have a target and we have to have an aggressive target. And the politicians in DC, they got to support NASA. They're not really surprised, pro providing the funds we need to get to the moon. They're just not, we need more money. So that's where the NSS uh, come, comes, comes in play. You've got to convince the, the Congress people and the senators in both party to, to, to contribute more to NASA and to more to science too. 
we need funding for the NSF and the NIH and the EPA and all of those organizations as well. So here we have uh, now uh, the finished Orion sitting on top of the European service module. That work is done in the Neil Armstrong operations and checkout building. Mm -hmm. and, um, and so we were there just a year ago now uh, at this point, <laughs> exactly a year ago, last, uh, last January. And you know, we got a cold snap here. There was a cold snap there too uh, at that time. So some these pictures are from, from Gene and me. Mm -hmm. uh, Gene on the left and mine on the right. You see, uh, uh, this is in the high bay in the ONC. You see people for scale there. Mm -hmm. um, and then th that's actually the door to go out. This is the covering you're going to see here in a moment. But there's Orion. And there's the European service module beneath it. And so it's it's an international program. And so um, that's why we will have, uh, and that's good because we will have more support from other countries and the United States doesn't have to pay. Saves the us whole money way. too, yes. I Saves a lot of money. money. And you know, the Europeans do great things. This satellite launching from SpaceX today, actually an, a, an Italian satellite, hopefully will go tomorrow now. So now here you see, now it's coming out. And so what what's this scene, Gene? Describe this a little bit. Oh, uh, we had the, uh, we were watching this being transported. It was a very, very cold day that day and the transporter broke down. And so we had to wait hours for them to move that. Yeah. And then wound up, they put it back inside and moved it the next day. Yeah. But anyway, we were there together mm -hmm. and, along with uh, a bunch, bunch of other media people. And so now let's move on to SLS. Okay. SLS is basically made of barrels, rings, and domes. And uh, we got to see those individual parts. So it's important to know how it was built. And it's the successor, the, uh, the core stage, and it's bigger than the external tank from, from the space shuttle. That's the heritage. The new part is down here, the engine section. And this is what took forever and has caused much of the delay because that's brand new. And that had to be designed with four space shuttle main engines. Mm -hmm. And so here you see the piece parts now in Michoud. Wow. This is now at NASA Michoud in Louisiana. Mm -hmm. And here we see SLS core stage assembly. Okay, so this is actually the SLS-1 that I saw a few years ago. It was Orion Day. And you can see where the media was transported in these little golf carts because the plant is huge and you can't walk it. You have to ride on, ride around in there. Exactly. And this is the welding wonder that had issues too. And you know, they also had issues with hurricanes a lot of times, damage. So uh, when you hear about, uh, you know, things, things uh, being at risk, this is one of the places at NASA most at risk because it is right on the Gulf. Mm -hmm. And they had to put sandbags even in the shuttle era and protect it from not being destroyed. Because if this goes down, you don't have a tank and then that's the end of the program until it's rebuilt. So that, that'd be bad. But, but this is a barrel and then there's rings that they, they, they put and they put and they weld, put them in there and they weld them together and then they put the domes and then you, you wind up with the tanks, uh, liquid oxygen, liquid hydrogen welded together into one piece that's 20% longer, 212 feet long, uh, tall, I should say long. And here are the uh, Aerojet Rocketine engines, another company really nice to us. So he, those are the four. These are recycled from the space shuttle era. These were these were left over. They've undergone extensive testing, and there you see about the size of a car, mm -hmm. um, and they've all been uh, run through. And but what's new is this engine controller. All right, and this has led to the most recent delay because they had to replace one of these on one of the four engines in the VAB in the last month, and finally they're going through the testing, and and it's working now. But they've also increased the, the maximum thrust of these engines from 104% to 109%. So the thrust of the actual, uh, this, the whole space shuttle combined with, this, with the SRBs is 8.8 .8 million versus about 7.5 million for the shuttle. So it's got 20% more power. And uh, so that's it, shoot. Okay, so now um, here's the core stage basically complete. And Artemis is due really to uh, Bridenstine. And what a great guy, what a great administrator. You know, we didn't, it was just a, not a very focused program, but he came in, in around 2017, took a while to get him confirmed, but uh, he's a congressman from Oklahoma and he did a wonderful job as NASA administrator. And uh, we, we're sad to see him go. We like Nelson too, don't get me wrong, but he, Bridenstine was great. 
And you have a personal experience with Bridenstine. Tell us about that. I will. I want to first say is that's the test stand in the bottom. Yeah, right this is, this is we'll get to that okay. after that. Well, Bridenstine had come up to the Atlantis exhibit a couple of years ago, and I gave him a quick tour. And the following year, um, I didn't, unbeknown to me. And he was a congressman. He was at a that congressman time. then. He had, from had Oklahoma. Been, yeah, from, he was an administrator then. He came up to Theron Pratsy, who's our COO at the visitor complex here where the Atlantis exhibit is. He said to Theron, you know, there was a really, really interesting lady and who knew her stuff. And he said, I met her last year and I really, really hope that she's here today. And as soon as they turned the curve, he said, and there she is. And he was talking about me. And I thought, wow, I mean, here I am. I'm surprised he even remembered me. But he said, you were very, very enthusiastic about the program. So how could I forget about you? So that was very nice. And then you gave him a tour. I gave him another when tour. When he was yes, a congressman. Yes. And then he was our administrator. And too. he's the administrator. And guess what? He knows both of us by, by first names. That's why when I cover um, it, and I get things is because I know these people and Gene knows these people and we have a great relationship with them. And it's amazing. These people, they know so many people, but they know our first names. I, I was just going to say that it's a gift. I mean, even, I mean, we've met so many people who will either say, hi, Ken, hi, Gene. And it still blows my mind that they remember who we are. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And so over here, this is where, when the course stage was done, then we went over to NASA Stennis and that's where the green run tests were done. Mm -hmm. Two of them. Okay. Cause the first one wasn't long enough, but here's another reason why I like Bridenstine. Ah. Uh, because Pluto is a planet. And guess what? In August 2019, he did the right thing. He said, <laughs> Pluto's a planet. So what are we doing here, Gene? We're doing the Pluto salute. Even Alan Stern does it. In fact, Alan Stern was the first one who did it. So now we do it. Yeah, because who's Alan Stern? <laughs> if you don't know, there he is. He is the PI, the principal investigator, the chief scientist for New Horizons. Okay, mm -hmm. so this is at the Ultima Thule. Uh, flyby, which we were at at New Year's, the best New Year's, New Year's we ever had, New the Year's Eve. Eve. We spent it with the science team. Mm -hmm. And and who's this, Gene? Oh, that's Brian May from Queen. That was so tickled. Can I you believe it? Brian I... May from Queen. What a nice guy. And he's there. He's actually an astrophysicist. <laughs> and he took the time to meet the media for an hour and, and a talk half to us for us. an hour and a half. Wasn't that nice? You know what the thing is, is Ken doesn't smile a lot, but I have a picture of him with the biggest smile I've ever seen on his face is when he was having his picture with Brian. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And he made a, 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 a song, CD. Yeah, a CD, CD a, a song yeah. specifically for Ultima Thule. I wish I had time to play it. I don't, but, but if you do, you want to listen to it. It's got great video of showing how Ultima Thule, of how New Horizons, flew through the solar system past Jupiter and Saturn. It's, it's wonderful. Great music set to wonderful animation. Okay. And who is this here, Jean? That's Alice Bowman. She was affectionately known as mom of the mission. The mission operations mission. manager. But, ma but mom. But so that was an honor meeting her yeah, too. Yeah, so he's the chief scientist and she's like the chief engineer of mission operations. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I organize also an astronomy conference, NEEF, Northeast Astronomy Forum up in New York City. Uh, right, right outside in New York, and I and I invited her and many others to come, and we got another one coming up. You know what? This was so great, Ultima Thule, because guess you see, what did we see here? We saw the first planetesimal. That's what it found. Okay, in the Kuiper Belt, we found it's only in in textbooks as as diagrams, but this actually took a picture of a planetesimal where we all came to be. I mean, it was hard for me to actually conceive planetesimals were real and there is a picture of it looking like frosty the snowman I know. <laughs> so there it is that's how we came to be from little planetesimals and that's the great discovery from new horizon it's, it's still going hopefully we'll make another um another encounter somewhere so okay so the core stage is finished then it came here. So what's going on here, Jean? Again, this is a jetty park. A lot of people want to know, especially if we have the landing tomorrow on LZ1, landing zone one for SpaceX. Jetty Park is the closest park or civilian area that you can go to to see a launch and a landing. And what you see there in the background is Pegasus bringing in the core stage, but it also has shuttle history because that's what brought in the, uh, the external fuel tank to shuttle into Kennedy Space Center. All right, and here's the here's the pier, so you could go out and see it. This is where the boosters come in. We're going to show you that a little bit later. But yeah, this is the same one that brought the external tanks, but it but it's been lengthened. Here is going through the locks. Here's one of our media friends, Jeff Seibert, 
Make, so, yeah, some of our colleagues are making cameo appearances here. I told them they better watch. And what's here in this picture, Gene? This is incredible, too. Which, oh. This well, newspaper clipping. Oh, that's a newspaper clipping. And, and Ken happens to be in the picture. Craig Bailey is one of our photographers for our local paper, Florida Today. And it was on the front page. And I said, hey, Ken, you're on the front page of the news. And he didn't know it. I didn't, didn't even know it. <laughs> but, but that just shows you, again, what you can see uh, just from the public, public viewing areas. Okay, so here's another shot now. This is our shot of Pegasus coming coming past what? It's Look, hard. what is what is this thing, Gene? It is a first stage booster. It's a SpaceX booster. They're, they're there. We have so many launches. I swear there's like one all the time. <laughs> this is like a once in a lifetime opportunity seeing the Pegasus, uh, the Pegasus uh, uh, transporter with an SLS just being towed right past a Falcon 9 recovered booster and the legs are up. And guess what? Maybe Elon said, I'll leave it up because we all expected this would be down because you see the work is done. So they could have lowered it horizontal and we expected that. But for some reason it was still up. And so Pegasus passed right by <laughs> a vertical booster. It was just a beautiful photo op. All right. So that was on uh, whatever day that was in April of this the, That's this the turn past basin year. At Kennedy Space and Center. then it came into the turn basin, and I saw it there. Welcome SLS core stage. There's the BAB, and that's where SLS is going to be. And that's the press built. site countdown clock. Yes. And so then I was there in April, and I saw them actually offload it. Look at this; it's just tremendous. Mm -hmm. um, they, they, this is the this is the core stage. This is the final uh, stage, and it's going into the SLS for uh, into the BAB for SLS one. There you can see. The engines and there's a nice little water reflection there. We see alligators um, there all the time. I see alligators <laughs> all the time. We had alligator pictures, but we we, we had to cut them because there's too <laughs> too many too many things to show. Anyway, so here it is being uh, readied for movement on the transporter. That transporter broke down too, but it moved the next day, yes. and uh, and eventually you, now we're going to see it moving there. Just dramatic shots in front of the VAB, and again, those are the four engines that we saw at Michoud. You see them here at the base of the core stage. Remember the shuttle had three, SLS has four. And uh, there's me, give them thumbs up. What a great day here. We have a nice <laughs> up close view of those engines. And you you did uh, for the shuttle, right? You did uh, aft skirt blankets, aft -skirt blankets, blankets there, yes. right? The, mm -hmm. the dome heat shield blankets, dome right? Heat blankets, yes. That's what you did. You can't yes. see them and in that's this a new picture. version. That's a new version of theirs. Ours but that's is, it's similar to what we had. Thermal yes. protection, so yes. it doesn't burn through. Really mm -hmm. critical. Here's a, so here's a, we see it now turning, going into the VAB. Mm -hmm. And then, um, so that's part of it. The other part is the solid rocket booster stack. Mm -hmm. So Gene, why don't you describe uh, this? You're probably wondering what that machine is in the bottom center. That's shuttle era. When we did the quilted blankets outside the shuttle, we had this 30 needle sewing machine. Needles are nine inches long. And we made those for blankets outside the shuttle. So you're wondering, why do we have the picture here? Well, before the shuttle program ended, they had my friend Kathy and I, they were experimenting. They knew that the boosters would hit the water at a high velocity speed, and they were afraid that they would break. So we used that machine to actually make what we call aft skirt blankets for, that go inside the solid rocket boosters at the base to, for cushioning. So we have a picture of it. So you can see that we're still using shuttle knowledge, but we're using it for Orion. And I also helped make the test parachutes for Orion also. Right. So then we got to walk around. And this is your picture. So what, what are we seeing here? Those are SRB se segments. That SRB are be, segments. And look, what does it say? Together. Loaded. Loaded means yes. loaded, means yes. it's fuel. Yes, fuel, right? yes. <laughs> So that's going to be stacked on top of this segment that's here, the aft skirt segment. And that's, in the, that's still in the VAB also. This is in the transfer. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right? And what, what do we see here? This is cool. We have the NASA worm that's painted on one side of it. And I got a, I was lucky enough to go out back and I saw, I was able to take a shot of that. Yeah, we were both there, but we were in different groups. I didn't actually see that, so she saw it. So we, that's why we're showing uh, combined pictures here. Mm -hmm. And we went up and got an aerial view. This mm -hmm. is your shots again. Mm -hmm. So where are we here? 16th floor, 16th right? 16th floor, which happens, unfortunately, because we're talking about uh, Columbia. The remnants of Columbia are also in a special double room up on the 16th floor. And you're not allowed to go in there unless permission. But it's also on the same floor that they take media and, and VIP people up there so we can be able to get shots like this. Yeah, so this is the uh, the SRB stacking, two SRBs. Here's your shot, and what is this? 
this is an empty shell in the center right here. Guess what goes in there? That's the core stage. Core stage. That's before and, the core stage. And up here, what do we see? And up here, that's the end of the of, of what was constructed at that time. This is around er, early in 2021, so yeah. almost a year ago. You know, they've been stacking these over time, and so those other segments you just saw will get put on top. Mm -hmm. Now we didn't get to see it. Uh, into me because of COVID, everything's so restricted, we can't go and see everything. But two years ago, they brought in the Pathfinder, this cement uh, replica, mass simulator, replica, complete uh, uh, replica, full size replica, and mass simulator of the core stage. So I can show you what it would have looked like if we had seen the core stage. So here it is being lifted in the transfer aisle before you saw us with the uh, SRB segments there and the, and, the, and the high bay is over here on the right hand side. And here's my fisheye lens. I got a fisheye lens, shows okay. you everything. So you can see everything, the whole transfer aisle and the VAB. And here we have now it fully raised. So they're raising it here with the cranes and here it's fully raised, okay. And then the, the, um, the, the, the SRBs would be here on the side and that's where the core stage goes in the middle. So, Gene, then we, we in December, we both went there separately. So what are we seeing here, Gene? OK, again, I'm back up on the 16th floor. I'm NASA badge, so we had privilege that we were able to go in December to see the stack. And Ken was able to go a couple of weeks later with media. So I know I have a few people that are a little jealous. I wish everybody had the chance to go up there. Yeah, so that's the full stack, core stage, SRBs. And then Orion is up there. So let's go through a few more pictures. Here's a here's a close up, right? These are your shots. Yep. ESA European Space Agency. And that's that's the European Service Module ESM one. This is the uh, the inner stage, the LVSA. And then uh, we see the the fully stacked boosters, right? Before you, they were only uh, the segments were only to about yeah, roughly here. Mm -hmm. Now you see the fully stacked SRB. So that's what was happening over the last year. Mm -hmm. And then there's a nice shot from Gene, right? Showing the, the tips of the two nose cones. Uh, yeah, and I have been, so you can see, I have men here on the left-hand side, just for a size right. of perspective. Yeah, yeah. And you see there's a black, uh, there's a black uh, uh, ring there. And that's how they can differentiate which is the left booster and which, which is, is the, the right, right booster, right? And they're not recovering these boosters, by the way. The shuttle had parachutes, right? You worked on those. This is what you worked on, parachutes too, for them, right? Uh, for the for the, uh, the shuttle SRBs. And then there's another shot from Gene, close up. Really look look at all the detail you can see on on the uh, the nose cone of the SRB as well as. Yeah, that's the foam. Yeah. That's the foam. Now we don't luckily have to worry about foam hitting the shuttle because the the crew capsule is on top now, right? The crew capsule is on top, and and the and the and the foam is below the crew, so it's not going to hit like like in uh, Columbia. So then I got to see it a few weeks later. Here's some more shots. Yeah. Okay. Now we're going to do some uh, wide shots. So here, again, here's the fish eye. Here's the fish eye view of the complete SLS stack. Uh, this was right before Christmas, saw it during a CRS-24 uh, launch. Here's a side view. You can see here's the media. Here we, before we were able to get here, but that was blocked off. So we were back here, but we, believe me, we were just glad to be inside. I, yes. I asked the press site if they would do it and they, find, they finally did it for us. So here's the media here. Here's the transfer aisle. And then here's the fully stacked SLS-1, Artemis-1 with the core stage and the boosters. Here's a, a, a zoom shot and now. The There's the uh, the um, the sure. launch abort system, and Orion is here. And then below that, again, we see the European service module. And here's a really nice zoom shot. And ESA will continue to build those those uh, service modules. And the the uh, the launch abort system uh, is built by what's now Northrop Grumman. Uh, so here's a wide shot uh, in in the um, in the VAB. And then another close-up of the other of the other SRB, and so they are almost done testing uh, Artemis One. They did a second countdown simulation uh, just earlier this week on the twenty fourth, and um, and so they got a few more tests to do, and then um, roll it out. So that's our discussion about SLS. Here we also saw one day them doing the uh, the uh, the Rainbirds sound suppression, suppression system testing that. So there's no SLS here. Next time we see it, we'll be 
rolled out with an SLS on top. We're looking to see that around February 15th. Might be later. Might be later, but that's what it is right now. The wet rest rehearsal where they're going to load the liquid oxygen and hydrogen for the first time here at KSC. You know, they did it in at, at Stennis, of course, but that's the first time here with the full stack. That'll be late February. And then the launch for Artemis 1 net March, April, I really doubt March, there's so much work they have to do because after they do the wet dress, they got to roll it back to the VAB, check it out and then roll it back out to pad 39A, uh, 39 39B again. So they got a lot of work to do. So it's probably going to slip. April could even be later, who knows? Artemis 1 will be the first test of a human space flight capsule going to the moon and actually even beyond the moon. Uh, this is this is the uh, orbital diagram for what it, for what it is going to do about a three week mission fully test out Orion uh, and S uh, uh, yes fully test out Orion they don't have all the environmental control systems in there that's why there are no astronauts on on this one but um, eventually we'll get back to the moon and uh, you know Musk and SpaceX has now gotten it's the contract sure. for the lunar lander uh, so hopefully that'll all work out. Um, but they got a lot of work to do. It's actually a very complicated system, but where are they gonna go? They're, here's the Apollo with the equatorial regions. Uh, Artemis is targeted to go here to these permanently shadowed craters where the water is. And you know, we, we wanna get that water and uh, find out if it's there. We know it's there, but we've gotta find out if how much is there, what's the composition, the, what's the concentration, I should say, and, and then mine it so we can live off the land because we don't wanna bring everything up from earth. You know that's, very expensive. We can live off the land there and Mars, not bring all the resources that we need. Um, that would be great. Splitting the water into hydrogen and oxygen. We have rocket fuel and breathable oxygen. So uh, now we're going to move on to Mars because NASA's vision is moon to Mars. Um, and so that's the other big thing is the Perseverance rover because of COVID. We didn't get to see it, but I was there with uh, curiosity in the clean room about, uh, about eight, eight, nine years ago. That's what it looks like. That's, That's me. Good. That's good. And uh, those are the wheels. They've been upgraded. And I do a lot of mosaics. Okay. I've done hundreds of mosaics, published it widely. Public, I have 14 APODs, Astronomy Picture of the Day, co covers on Aviation Week. Here is when it first flexed its arm. Okay. The robotic arm points to the mountain. Mount Sharp is behind there. And that's where the rover is now. And then here, this one is the first drilling. I'm a chemist, and these are robotic. Uh, chemists actually, and they have two chemical analyzers in, in the belly of the rover to analyze for organic materials, which is what I am and inorganics too. And so this is the first interplanetary drilling on another planet. And this is on permanent display, this mosaic right outside the Air and Space Museum. This is another apod of mine, a thousand solids on Mars where you can see um, uh, the, the picture of the rover with the, with, the, uh, with, the, with the tire tracks, the wheel tracks, I should say. <laughs> and the mountain behind it. So here's a, a replica now, full-scale replica at the press, press site. site. Yeah, the press uh, site. It launched in July, so I was there for that. Launch and pre-launch, there wasn't much to see, but they did have this beautiful replica there. And I asked them if you could put that helicopter. So this is what it really looks like. That's a full-scale replica of the helicopter and a full-scale replica of the rover, because I'm going to show you my mosaics of how it, how it was dropped down to the surface in a moment. But this, this is it, and that's the solar panel. These are the wings, 2,500 RPM. These are the four landing legs, and that's that's the, uh, the the computer and the guidance system there. And it weighs and, a little over four pounds. Yeah, just about four pounds. Mm -hmm. So, um, and it dropped below the belly, and so then they had to drive it away. So I made this picture to give you an idea of what it would look like, because you can't take this picture on Mars. So there's the uh, there's the Atlas V. It launched on an Atlas. It's 5 March 2020. Here's one of my remote shots. Now, here's my mosaics I created. Uh, here's Sol 15, just 15 days after it landed. Space.com, you might know that website. I put this online. They asked me for it, so that was published there. This is kind of like the shadow of the Martian robot, the new one. You know, there's been shadows of the other robots, and I've done them too, from Spirit, Opportunity, Curiosity, and this is Perseverance. So there's the masthead right there. And the uh, the robotic the stowed robotic arm. There's another one here I did now. Wheel tracks you can see. Uh, and here now we see I put this mosaic together. NASA has their version. I put my own together. So it dropped down from the belly 
Of course, there was a protective heat shield that had to drop first. And then here you see it uh, deploying to the surface and then the la landing legs popping out, being deployed. And then they drove away, you see, and I did this self-portrait. NASA has their version, this is my version. And there is the, um, there is the, the helicopter, Ingenuity. And again, like I showed you in that, that, that replica picture, the rover had to drive away and then expose it and keep it alive. And so this is an, another version of that you can see. Um, and it's a lot. This is hundreds of pictures. I, I create these mosaics and I have them available, you know, for sale if you're interested. Help support our website, ad free website, Space Up Close. Here's another mosaic I did uh, with uh, uh, Jezero Crater in the background. This is where she's going to be driving to. It's taking samples, okay? Because why do we land at Jezero Crater? Because of the stromatolites there. They think that could be microfossils of, of, of organisms that have been deposited there over billions of years. And these layered mats is what they want to get samples of and eventually bring them back to Earth, okay? Think of the Martian, okay? They're going to shoot them off with the Mars Ascent vehicle and then capture with another orbiter that gets sent, okay, from the Earth and then another, and then it bring it back to the Earth. So it's a very complicated. Think about the Martian and it's going to be done robotically. Uh, that was a great movie. And then here's another mosaic I did, a self-portrait showing, showing perseverance there on the surface. And uh, uh, we'll conclude the Mars part with, you know, there's a dust storm on Mars right now. And guess what? The ingenuity is solar powered, right? So it's been grounded. It's been grounded because because of the dust. This is where it is, and it's covered in dust. That's the Mars, client, uh, Mars color imager on uh, MRO. Uh, that's been there about 16 years, and we need a new orbiter with a new high-resolution camera because it's it's nearing the end of its lifetime. NASA again needs more money to do all this stuff. And there's on this side you see that's the helicopter in flight, absolutely amazing. And then they were going to stop after five flights, and I participate in these briefings. And I asked them, I always thought that was a little bit crazy. I asked them, why don't you fly, fly ahead at least once, and then have the rover come and meet it? perseverance and maybe you can can learn something and basically uh, they said well we have to ask the higher management about that and you know what they wound up doing almost exactly what i suggested and now they have done 18 flights the 19th one will happen when um when when the dust storm clears hopefully and that also you know we have the lander insight uh that's also gone into safe mode because of this dust storm i think it just came out the other day so it's safe and it's it's back alive, but it can't do too much until the, the power uh, power rises. But you know what? Dust storms can kill, and that's what happened with Opportunity. Here's another uh, panorama that I put together. Uh, this is basically the last panorama from uh, Opportunity. Uh, me and Marco Di Lorenzo, uh, we're Italian guy. We worked together on for many years, creating hundreds of mosaics. Here you can see Endeavor Crater in the background, and this is where she died. Actually, at Perseverance Valley, very very topical name at Endeavor Crater back in June of 2018. They spent a long time to try to uh, recover the rover. Unfortunately, it didn't happen because we know when it gets cold on Mars, it gets really cold. It's like Antarctica at night. And so they couldn't, they couldn't keep the warm electronics box warm. It had to be minus 45. They couldn't keep it warm anymore, minus 45C. And so probably the chips, the chips broke because they couldn't heat it anymore. But we got we got um, um, 15 years out of this rover instead of three months. So way beyond expectation. So Spirit and Opportunity are just spectacular vehicles. So now let's come back to uh, ISS, which is actually a proving ground for moon to Mars. You know, we got to go to the moon first. That's my opinion. I want to go to Mars too, but we have to prove that that technology can work. And the ISS is great for doing that. And now I... What I, what I failed to say is that, you know, most of these pictures, almost every picture is taken by, by me and Gene. But guess what? I did not take this picture. I wish I could. <laughs> I wish. <laughs> <laughs> this was taken by Thomas Pesquad, the French astronaut, when they, when they departed, took great shots. So mm -hmm. I wish I could take this shot. Yeah, Ken but, wishes he could go in this Yeah, I wish I could go. And, and this is it. You know, this is, you know, where the, the, crew, the SpaceX crew dragons and cargo dragons dock right there. There's only two docking ports. Here's the Russian Soyuz segment back here. So just beautiful views, and these are brand new. We haven't had anything like this in, in a very long time. So here's the launcher crew too, I saw that. 
and they got to fly on a used booster. They didn't even get a new booster anymore. Crew two, and there's Megan MacArthur. She's the husband of uh, Bob Benkin. Wife, wife. I mean, the wife of Bob Benkin. Yep, good, thank you. <laughs> and she, you know, she operated the robotic arm on the Hubble mission. I was there covering that, the SDS-125. And we had two international astronauts for the first time because the, because the, the, commercial crew grab, crew, the commercial crew program and ISS is international. So that was the first time we had two, okay, on there. And uh, they did a handover from crew one to crew two. That was the first time. And it was so it was first reuse of a, of a Falcon 9. You can see it's sooty here. And it really is black. You, and, and they reuse these things. It's hard to believe, but they actually do it. And they, the, the crew Dragon Endeavor was also reused. And so they had two of these docked simultaneously at the first time. That, that would have happened again with crew three, but it didn't because of delays because of weather. So here's my streak shot um, taken um, actually from uh, Space Force Station. And you can see six and a half minutes and it spawned a jellyfish there like uh, uh, figure at the, at the end. So really, be really beautiful. It's hard to do these things, but mm -hmm. oh, I, I hope you like it. And um, so that's that. Here then is a, an engine shot flying past the crew access okay. arm. So that's, that is the, you know, the, the cushion and the port where they white room. snug the, the white, white room. Like the that's white the white room, room. right? Yeah. That's the word I'm looking for, the white room against the capsule. That's how the astronauts aboard the Crew Dragon right there. They walk down here, take the elevator up, walk down there and go through the and white room. And that's the old um, shuttle pad 39A. Right, this is ship pad 39A. So here's some more shots of mine. Uh, remote shots and, and and then okay so what happened then they they spent that six months they came back and now let's let's pass it a little bit on to you Gene okay. what is what's what do we see here okay that's the go navigator um it's a transport ship and you can see the crew the crew cabin in the back but again that's taken right from Jetty Park can't stress enough that's a wonderful place to go there's always something going on there yeah so they parachute in and at night Here's the uh, the boats that uh, got the astronauts, brought the hold them on to go navigator. All those people coming up to it. And then yeah, <laughs> all these all these crazy people. It takes about five days to go from the Gulf around uh, Florida Peninsula to get here. What do we see in here, Gene? That's na go navigator again, and you can see the crew cap capsule in the back there, all sooty. We said it looked like a toasted marshmallow. Ken's got an up close shot in the next one, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, we yeah. got the crew there. They always wave at that. us. They're as waving they go to by. us. So yeah. they they were happy we to go. greet us. Yes. And there they are. Here they are. And then these are these are the thrusters. The abort thrusters that if they need, if there's an emergency, can carry the capsule away in a split second, and uh, and and save the astronauts' lives if there's an exploding rocket beneath them. So that's a up close views of those one, of yeah. those. There's four of those thrusters on there. Mm -hmm. And again, look, toasty marshmallow. It's incredible. And then they reuse this capsule. Mm -hmm. Amazing. And then uh, so here's inspiration four because it's COVID. It's really hard. Most of the time, we only get one person in. But Gene got to be in Inspiration Four. Yeah, so there was a lot of press. About this. A lot of press allowed that day. So that's me by the countdown clock. I think uh, I, I'm probably making people jealous. But uh, when I first went out there, that was the first place I went to to get my picture taken when I first started working out there because it's an like, well, this is a newer version. But the uh, countdown clock is the second most photographed clock in the world, with Big Ben being number one. So always wanted a picture there. Yeah. And we got the flag and we got the, the VAB in the back. The VAB where they're building SLS right now. Okay. So here's a couple more shots. What are we doing here? Oh, always. I tell you, you lose track of the launches because there's been so many of them. But yeah, again, that's a, that's a we're driving. setting remotes. Setting remotes. We're yes. setting remote cameras so we get nice views all around. Again, look at that study booster. Mm -hmm. Look at that. <laughs> <laughs> Here's your shots. Here's locks vending, right? Yes, it is. Um, and in the bottom shots is actually the four astronauts on I. In, yeah. I say I for international. I mean, I inspiration. For, in, I'm inspiration. sorry, inspiration four. And I actually had to run down the hill at the press site just as they were going by to get get the shots of them heading out to the pad. And look at the, you might have heard one of them had their arm out. She got it. I did not get it, <laughs> but she got it. The middle car. Look at that yeah. right here. See that. And then look, I, so I blew it up. See, there's his arm. Mm -hmm. I forgot which one it was, but it, maybe it was Sean Proctor. I, I don't remember it exactly. It was, I think it but was. But I think it was her. Uh -huh. And so they came out in the three Teslas. And so that's them. Yeah. So um, yeah, 
and um, and then here's your here's your shot. Beautiful reflection in the in the turn basin. Ken loves reflection shots. Yeah. So here's my streak shot. It was a little dewy that night, but but look at that. Look at that arc. See that arc. That's just mm -hmm. spectacular. And here's path. Here's where SLS is going to be. Right here. You see those three lightning masts right there. That's where uh, SLS will be in about two and a half weeks. So there's not, nothing there now, but it's coming soon. Mm -hmm. You have a chance. You want to see it. Here's my shot of uh, booster separation, uh, second stage going to orbit, and here's the first stage and creating a nice jellyfish. So that's going to come back and, and land then on the drone ship. Another uh, one of our Another streak one. shots at night. It's tough. It's really tough to get it's anything dewy. at night. It's dewy. Very dewy. Yeah. Very dewy. So then we had crew three. Uh, again, an international crew. Kayla Barron, what an, what an inspiring woman. She was the last person uh, uh, named to this crew. And there's Matthias Maurer. I'm German, so I, I'm really happy I got to speak to him in German, actually. Mm -hmm. And uh, the finally, the first time they, they let really any significant number of media, still restricted, actually see them. This is that crew arrival, okay, um, in October. And um, so I got to go to the crew arrival. That's the only one I've been to because it's so restricted with COVID. So I was really, really happy to be there and get to ask to meet them and ask them questions. And there's Maruk, a little close up. And here's a mock-up with the abort thrusters. Okay, look at that. And uh, very cloudy. And we had a lot of delays because of weather. Here we are again, setting up our remotes. Oh. A nice view of the crew access arm, 39A. And look at the, the NASA meatball and the worm on the second stage. Mm -hmm. Really, really cool. Crew three. And uh, some cool. more I shots. have to say the pad, obviously, for people who love the shuttle, the pad looks nothing at all like it used to. <laughs> yeah. And so here's, again, here's a fisheye streak, but we didn't see too much. Got to see something, but not a whole lot no. because of all of that cloud cover. It was just really awful weather. We didn't even think we would launch that. More launch shots. More launch shots. And here's the remotes ruined by the dew. You know, <laughs> you get one shot if you're lucky. And then the 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 water is illuminated by the rocket, by the light from the I rocket, and pretty. it ruins nice it. Shot. So I just want to show you what happens. Artistic. I think that's the only remote that, that worked that whole. And now here's another shot I wish I took, but I did not take this shot. This is Expedition 66. They had a, a they had their camera taking pictures of them. That's the crew that's up there right now. Mm -hmm. uh, three on the Soyuz and four from crew three. And it's a Russian American German crew. And they, and you know, they rotate French astronauts and Canadian Italian. astronauts, Italian astronauts, Japanese astronauts. And the first Russian will be a woman will be on crew five. So we're really happy that uh, that's going to start again where we will have Russians and Americans because uh, we on 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 the various vehicles because we were totally dependent on the Russians, you know, after the shuttle retired. So here, uh, now we saw that booster come in a couple of days later. What are we seeing here, Chi? Again, we're back at Jetty Park. Like I said, it's the most fascinating place. At nighttime, it's kind of hard to take pictures, but um, I think it turned out very nice. The picture turned out pretty yeah, good, so considering. The recovery ship, Doug, you know, the, the fairing catcher boats have been retired, so they're not there anymore. Mm -hmm. So this um, is, is, is that's, that's it. So it's been, you see the legs, here, what are we seeing here? Look at these engines. More legs. More legs and more engines. engines. You get to see the nine Merlins as as it as it goes past you. But you gotta you gotta move quick because it doesn't wait for you. Yeah. So here's a really nice shot you can see of the booster, and here it is going past pleasure boats. And the drone ship at the bottom. And the drone ship at the bottom. Here's a nice look at this steam, right? What are we seeing here? A lot of steam from the recovery ship. Mm -hmm. This is how they use now the uh, the this crane extract these these uh, fairings out of the water they don't use those those boats the anymore with anymore. the big nets those are retired they were too dangerous i think and that's me on the left and there's a lady named laura Risi or ricky and, and she's there every time there's a space sex any type of function she's always there <laughs> and this is this is at night and look at look at the beautiful water reflections you get there it's just spectacular and so we, we like, and again, this is public. You can see it. You just have to know when it's there. And there is a, public, a publicly accessible website, Space Offshore. He has a great, great uh, Twitter feed there. And you can, we all contribute to that and, uh, and, and try to figure out when these things are arriving. And sometimes you see it. 
and sometimes you miss it and sometimes you get there and it's just happening right in front of your eyes and you other see, times can you see spacex yeah, right in there it could take forever <laughs> and then here's here's the crane crew you know and they and they um Took they it. retract these legs not manually they ret uh, not not with the crew they used to have to dissect them like an insect now they re just retract them up mm -hmm. And so here we see now daylight shots of Doug Ness, the big crane that hauls the fairings out of the water. Here's steaming at night. And that's the Pelican Space Force guarding. Always. Used to be the Pelican Air Force. Now it's the Pelican Space <laughs> Force, all right? And so sometimes we go and, and, um, and, we, and we have to, to have Zarellas. some enjoyment for fun and food. And, and here we go to Zarellas. And John used to be a reporter for space for John CNN. John Zarella for CNN. And look here, this is also astrophotography. Okay, <laughs> on November 8th, there's the moon in Venus. So I captured that with Zarellas that night. It was just right when this picture was taken, we ate at Zarellas. And, uh, and then afterwards, we went back to the port and we saw the moon and had a great time. There's John Zarella, great. Reporter yep. for CNN. He's retired now. And in the bottom space right is our, our friend Chris Boyd. He's one of the moderators for the Space Hipster site and a longtime friend. And there's a beautiful dishes. So when we when we after the launch, if we have time, or after remotes, whatever whatever it is, we will we, we will go, go there. there. A lot of and astronauts go there So that's the space too. hangout. And that's where the astronauts hang out. So you yes. could you could see them, and they have great pictures on the wall. And Gene, you made this gingerbread, and why did you make this? Well, the, we, we're there a lot to Zarellas, and the team works so hard there. So I love to bake. So that's the logo for Zarellas I made out of gingerbread. And I brought dozens of cookies that night so that the crew that worked there could have some. So that's that's gingerbread, and that's John behind me. Yeah, this is right before Christmas. They're always nice to us. Sometimes oh. they give us cannolis <laughs> on the house. <laughs> and But the food is always great, so we highly recommend it. You might yes. see pictures from us. Yeah, uh, we walls. were just there last week. So here, here, and here's all the tea. Here's all the cookies you made, right? Yes. And here's some of the people, people working. Work and I also want to point out two people uh, making cameo appearances here. Here, here's Jared Frankel. Now he's a photographer for you guys. And you know what? I recommended him to you. Uh huh. Okay. And, and, he, Mike, Mark I, and he in the bottom. looks at me as a mentor. I got him kind of started. He was interested in space, and he came to one of my outreach talks, and he said. Man, I want to learn more about this. So he's just a great kid yeah. and he is moving up. So I'm proud to have recommended him to you. And then here's another guy, uh, Sean Cannon. He kind of took his place because because Sean, I mean, uh, Jared is now working. Uh, working in the, and he gets the best views of SLS. He could be right next to it. OK. And, and uh, the bottom is Mark Uziak and uh, a fellow photographer, Carlton Bailey. They both been taking pictures out there for years. Yeah. So it's really, really wonderful there. I told them they would be making cameos. So I hope they're, <laughs> they're seeing that right now. Uh, okay. So now we are back to um, um, the next launch crew three here. Uh, I mean, uh, I'm sorry, CRS-24. Unfortunately, the top is blocked out here. Yeah, and here's the streakless streak shot because that was completely over overcast. We didn't see it after about 10 seconds. It disappeared into the cloud. And there is- um, They call the, that a lightsaber. The lightsaber streak that I did here again. Then the booster came in a couple of days later mm -hmm. and we saw it. Here's the cap. You can see the cap on there and they had just taken it off. Uh, and here is a nice diagram from NASA shows you um, uh, what the ISS configuration looks like. And here's two crew dragons docked. So that's where they dock. And then on the other side is the Russian segment. This is the new um, Nauka module from, from uh, Russia that just docked with a little bit of difficulty over the summer. So that's their last major addition. So uh, what's ahead is, um, is we have crew four coming up in, in April and then crew five in October. Axiom one has been delayed from late February to late March. Um, Boeing Starliner hopefully will launch sometime this year, continuing missions from Soyuz and Progress and, and, uh, and uh, CRS missions, crew, 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 commercial resupply missions to the ISS. Hopefully we'll see, there might be three Falcon Heavy. So here's my picture of the launch and you can see two. I mean, it's, you can't even believe one, come back, one comes back and to see two almost simultaneously. 
And you see in this picture, you see how close it is to the ground when the legs actually deploy, yeah. okay? It's not high in the sky. It's literally at the last second. And, uh, and then it kicks up the sonic booms and you know, you think just it's, like it's going to be destroyed just like the shuttle, but there's three of them. And when there's two of them, there's like six, there's at least six sonic booms. So really knocks your socks off. Here's the Lucy mission. Okay. Uh, that launched uh, the Trojan asteroids. I saw that in the clean room. Uh, here it is. And um, the science instruments, here's the solar panel. Now this hasn't totally latched yet, but they're they're very optimistic. It's mostly deployed, and they may not have to even fully latch it to get it to get it um, a more clean room um, to get it to, to go. They think they can operate the whole mission probably even without that. That's the latest update just a few days ago. So again, here I am. Here I am with the science team uh, with Lucy in the background, and again a streak shot, and that just had no arc. It just went straight up and straight down from our parent look. And uh, here's the countdown clock and the US flag over there. Mm -hmm. And here's a, a couple launch shots from that. Now we're, we're going to show quickly um, uh, where, you, where you can see, where you can see, right? Here's Titusville and here's the launch pads. And there are many, many parks along, uh, along, along Route river. 1 here, the river. We're going to show you those spots where you can watch it. And you can also go down to Port Canaveral, but there you don't see the launch. It's great for landing, mm -hmm. but not for launch. But a lot of people go there. You only see it after it, it comes out from behind the trees and that high, a high ridge that's there. So uh, this is Space View Park, Park. Where, where Jean showed you her, her plaque memorial, the yes. shuttle. This is just to, to the side of that. So again, this is public. Look, this is the view that you can see. It costs you nothing. And you can see it right there, and it's a great view. And you can see there's nothing in the way, mm -hmm. right by the Max Brewer Bridge. It's a little bit of a wider shot. Here's a daylight streak shot that I got. Uh, and now Gene, <laughs> yeah, and and Gene, here's Gene's shots. Show those and, trolls. And and here we go. They're making a little appearance tonight. We have a, a tradition. Some of the photographers they're called our launch mascots, and so we always say that they're lucky for us. Carlton has all his little Fodsies and his dinosaurs and his Godzillas. So I have a vintage. This um this one right here is from 1974. Wow. So um anyway, that's our we say they bring us luck for our launches. And they're mostly successful. Yeah. And then hey, what 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 are we seeing here? Big crowds, right? Yeah, this is this also is at Space View Park. Um, and again, that's right on the river, and that's a few uh, free viewing site too. And you did a lot of outreach while you were there, right? I did, I did. We were we were there, but we were in different spots so we could get different views. But a lot of people come here and again, it's free. And there's a gentleman called Ozzy Osband who on his own time, he volunteers and does launch commentary there. Yeah, so it's a really great place to go. You can see all, all the major launch pads there. You could watch SLS. You can watch Dragons. Pad you can 40, watch Falcon 9. You can see Pad 40. You can see 41. ULA Atlases. You can see the ULA Deltas. They're all visible. Even Blue Origin is visible. Okay. There. More, more so ports from the sh more here's a, a couple more shots again we just showed up and look what happened yes. they're raising it off the drone ship yes and what else do we see here gene oh i mean you can see i i took this shot there happened to be an airplane just happened to be flying by yeah you have to be quick and yeah. again we know it was there we got there in the nick of time and then they they they, they crane it off put it on the ground pedestal and there there are the guys so here's a couple more launch shot. I mean, a couple more uh, booster shots. And again, the Pelican Space Force is always on always guard. There. And here's Transporter 3. And that's what it looks like with all of our cameras set up or remote, just some of them. <laughs> and so here's your shots. And now we, for this one, because it also involved the landing, we went to Jetty Park, Jetty Park to actually again. see the launch and the landing. It's great. It's not good for the launch, but the it's great for perfect. the landing because you don't see the launch until it clears these trees. So you don't see ignition, but you do see landing. And so you caught, look at this, booster, booster separation. separation. I didn't catch it, but she got it. I did, I got it. So that was just a great view. And then look here, here's the booster coming back to earth. That's the pier at Jetty That's Park. why we went there. Yeah, that's the pier at Jetty Park. Jetty Park, and look mm -hmm. at that. She caught it right there. There's the, the legs popping out, mm -hmm. deploying down, mm -hmm. okay? And uh, there's her remote. 
and then Transform we were there very so much glare that day yeah and there's a long one of my um, street shot and this is my daylight streak really really hard to get this i finally got the settings right right at the last second and then i got the landing so i've got the launch and the landing yeah. now we'll, we'll zoom in here for the uh, for the uh, for the for the landing and you can see the people mm -hmm. and here's a, a even more zoom there's the blue origin pad here's the blue origin pad here uh, right on the beach so that's why we went here uh, and this was just a week and a half ago actually more here, proud shots here's yes. a, 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 a the, legs the zoom shot you can see the legs starting to deploy so I was really happy I got exactly what I wanted and you can see big crowds there yes and there's there's Gene yep with the, with the, <laughs> with a with bunch the of birds. junk in my front pocket <laughs> and then Astra you might have heard about their pad is out here right at the tip of the cape so that's mm -hmm. why we're showing you that mm -hmm. shot so then we had Starlink 46 again last week we had we had two launches and this is the view from uh, Playa Linda. Uh -huh. If you get to go there, see a launch, that that's it's really spectacular. Here's the Falcon 9 over here. That's a, the Atlas a. pad is yeah. wonderful if you go see an Atlas there. Only and open and 39A the is right here, right there. And then, oh, yeah. so that was seeing the rocket. Then we came actually to, again, a park on, on, on Route 1 here in Titusville to see, to see it. And I wanted to get a different view um, this was just a launch and a landing on a drone ship, but not back here. So I was trying to get it between the palm trees. So there's Jean. Freezing. freezing. It was so cold. <laughs> and the moon, the moon. Low. Okay, what is going on here? There okay. So there's the moon. And it was going to fly right past the moon. And look at that. It did. And I got the street shot mm -hmm. right between the palm trees the way I wanted, right below the moon. And then here's another one with the marina. I got it over, over the marina. So I was real happy with these shots. And then here's the rocket streaking past the moon. And again, you can see here's the streak shot. And that's a, a still image right there. So then also last week, we were, <laughs> it's just relentless. It's relentless. Um, the drones did, I mean, the, the, trolls. Not the drones, the trolls, the trolls. <laughs> the trolls did a great job. Here we are with the Atlas, the big slider, the only one of this version with a five meter nose cone. And one and one solid Ooh. rocket booster that you see over here, there in the flame trench. And, and that's the girls again. That's the girls again, and they yeah. brought good luck. So here's Gene's shots. Mm -hmm. uh, here's the camera army getting ready, mm -hmm. and there it is taking off. I like to call this the tank farm image. And here you can actually see it slide. It doesn't go up; it goes to the side. Mm -hmm. it's, it's the only rocket that does this. The Atlas IV. Uh, 411 and 511 because they're it's not symmetrical and so Tori Bruno the CEO he retweeted a bunch of my shots so I was real happy when he does that or Elon Musk does it you, you get a lot of you get a lot of views but but look at that it's just it's just incredible how it moves to the side the RD-180s can compensate for that asymmetric torque and it still made it to orbit so here's a daylight streak and then here's the close engines up. close up of the engines three there's three nozzles so now let's move on to uh, I know James we're Webb. Out of time. We're running, now out of we're time. running out of time, but this is really important. This this just uh, arrived in orbit on my birthday last uh, Monday. On Monday, it's just amazing. So here I got to see I got to see James Webb. This is about five years ago. This is what it looks like in space right now with that mirror, eighteen segments and fully deployed. You know when they launch it, it had to be folded up. You're going to see that. And then they deployed the secondary mirror. That's what this is. That's what the animation shows from NASA deployment of the secondary uh, of the tripod with the secondary mirror. And I saw that also. This is at NASA Goddard. All right. And the, and uh, so here I am. Selfie. The first selfie. Selfie. Here is the. This is the. Uh, this is the back plane. This is what the the um, the mirrors were placed on. So first the back plane had to be built. Then it was shipped to Goddard. Then they installed the mirrors on there. Mm -hmm. And and that shows you what it actually looks like too in the in the launch configuration. Mm -hmm. And so here I'm reflecting in in the light of the uh, the telescope that's going to look back more than 13.5 billion years to the to to almost the Big Bang. Hubble can't look back that far, and it's looking in infrared. And here we see a uh, a primary mirror before it was uh, put in, and then there's the secondary mirror here. Here, here that you see it, um, and here, here it's raised. Here it's horizontal. Now here's a close up of it horizontal. You can see how, just how thin these these are, mm -hmm. and um, and and they're what they're doing now 
is they have to now focus the mirror, right? It's not one unit right now. It looks like one, but it's not a single mirror. So they got to they gotta focus them using these actuators that are on the back. And here's a real zoom shot. So those actuators are, are able to move it. Nowhere near what I'm doing with my fingers, but there's seven actuators that, that move each one of these mirrors. And so they'll be able to focus it. And that's what's going to take about three months to do that. And they got to cool it down to near zero while it's already cooling down. But when they got, they got to be at like 40 Kelvin before they can commission the science instrument. So that's why it's going to take until Christmas time. I mean, till uh, the summertime to get really the first pictures. And it is six times the size of Hubble. There's Thomas Tabukin. Here's my, here's my, um, here's my James Webb shirt. Hmm? And that's Michelle Dollar. This is yes. a really great programming that, that NASA did. Uh, so it just achieved halo orbit on, on the 24th, three days ago. Mm -hmm. So, and I did an interview on the BBC about that. Here you can see that's the, uh, in the, in the, um, at the L2 Lagrange point, And that's how it orbits. It orbits at the L2 Lagrange point. It's not a fixed point. That was a good birthday present for Ken that day. So that was a good birthday. Yeah, it was supposed to be the 23rd and it wound up being the 24th. So same day opportunity rover also landed on my birthday. So I'm real happy about that. So um, yeah, I think we're just about done. This yeah. is yeah, two boosters at one time deployed here, deployed legs, only time, just about the only time. And that's what it looks like when they are retracted. And the Space Force birds are And the again. Space Force birds, birds are the there. <laughs> and again, here's, a, here's a, a group of people. Here you can see the last shots of the, uh, the fairing boats without their nets there. Here's Gene. And again, just a, a, a nice view with people. Uh, okay. There it is at night. And some more, this is the Max Brewer Bridge, so you can get streak shots. That's in Titusville. In Titusville, another view in streak shots in Titusville. And this is going north, and now we can go to the south. Four South Polar launches this month, and it hasn't been done in like 50 years, and SpaceX did four in one month. Uh, so it's just, it's just unbelievable. You know, you had to do those polar launches from Vandenberg. Now we can do them from here. So I said we were going to land, and here we are landing back at the Cape. And so uh, we've, we've reached orbital velocity and now we've fired our thrusters and we're landing. And uh, so here's our pictures for sale. We're, we're just about done. If you wanna, if you like anything, we're available to give lectures. Mm -hmm. uh, it's ad free website, Space Up Close. If you buy my pictures, it helps us because it's all financed out of my own pocket. Here's jeans. You just describe your Those apparel are my quick. space shirts and ties and on everything that I make, I put a a flown piece of shuttle payload bay fabric on everything I make. Yeah, and I got one right here. Right there. Right, and right this, there. Is, this is my web shirt. Yes. And since I wore this, uh, after it fully deployed, you got a bunch of orders, didn't you? A bunch you? of orders for them, So, yes. But this gives you an, a, 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 an inkling of the different things that she has, shirts, ties, lanyards, okay. stuff like that. Okay. So now uh, we're ready for any questions that you might have. Thank you. I hope, I hope you enjoyed the program. We've had to go at uh, orbital velocity, but we've managed to land back. And uh, Well, the one thing I want to point out, you if you're wondering like... what the picture on the left is, to give your yeah. proportion, the um, shuttle right. stack is 185 feet tall, and that's little bitty me standing outside of it, and that was for Endeavour's last flight. Yeah, yeah. So I got to be there, too. The last three shuttles, we got to be actually mm -hmm. taking pictures of the shuttle on the on on a mobile launcher yeah. on, and on up up to up top too we don't have time to show any I'm of that so afraid but, of heights. but that's uh, anyway we'll take questions if anybody's got any thank you bert mm -hmm. yes oh wow fabulous uh why don't you stop sharing and stop uh, sharing. We, we're okay. a little bit over wow. but we can take some questions yeah, and not too bad okay yeah no great <laughs> uh i, I know we tried, Gene, you know, we tried. <laughs> but you mentioned a couple of times about being jealous. Yeah, I was sitting there being jealous. <laughs> uh, I took a lot of screenshots. Oh, I work on the pad sometimes, and I'm afraid of heights. So even my pictures I took on the 16th floor, I'm not, I'm not close to the the fence like you're supposed to be. Anyway. Right. So uh, a couple of questions that had come in beforehand, uh, and then we'll see about taking some that were just uh, submitted. But how did you both get into this? Uh, you know, you, you obviously come from STEM careers, but how did you get into this, uh, you know, the journalism aspect? And then being there, the, the eyewitness to all these launches. I used to be, um, as being still NASA badged, 
um, we have opportunities where we can escort press uh, and media. And so that always piqued my interest because I knew once shuttle ended, I still, you can't, you, you love it. So you do your docent work and you can get a chance to work out there. And that's how I met Ken. And Ken had his website for a while and, and uh, he asked me to be part of his team. <laughs> Right. But he's been taking pictures a long time. But I've been doing outreach for about 20 years when I was still working. I'm retired to chemist now, but I was still working uh, as, a, as, a, as a PhD research chemist um, in the pharmaceutical industry uh, when I got started in space journalism. I've been interested in space since I was in second grade, actually, inspired by Mercury, Gemini, Apollo, and Star Trek, too. Um, and uh, then uh, I started on my own doing outreach and I got involved with an astronomy club in Princeton, Princeton University. And I was their uh, lecture chairman also. And then uh, I, I, I started driving started, down here. <laughs> uh, well, it, yeah. the reason I'm here is because of Mars, because I was part of a team that put this self-portrait of the spirit Mars rover together. And, and, and that, I showed it to one of my speakers, Craig Koval, who was a, a senior writer at Aviation Week. Yeah. And he loved it. He loved it. And we worked on it and it wound up on the cover of Aviation Week. Incredible. And so then he said, uh, I said, man, maybe I could come down sometime. And he said, oh, I could get you in his media. And that's <laughs> how that happened. So I'm here because wow. of Mars. Great I'm here story. because of Mars. And I'm um, thankful to him. And thankful to NASA and all, and all the other, but now and but you know from there, and I've worked for many other websites. Now about four or five years ago, I started my own website. I'm my own boss, mm -hmm. so everything you see is our responsibility. If you like it or not, I hope you do like it. And it's overwhelming now with all of these launches, but uh, yeah. So I was doing outreach while I was still working, and now I have my own website. And you know the the sky's the limit, basically. And he lives down here now. But it's all self-finance. So if you right. watch something, yeah. it helps us. That sounds Just like good. NSS needs help, we need help too. <laughs> uh, there was a question in about the remote cameras. How does that work? Uh, and, and how many are you are you allowed to set up more than one? Oh, yeah. uh, and how far yeah. are they from the launch pads typically? Well, they're, you know, within a quarter of a mile, a couple hundred feet. Uh, it depends. There's different spots, north, south, east, and west around, around the pads. Uh, we don't always get to circle the pad, but we're restricted to certain areas. Um, and you can put out as many as you want, but you only have about a half an hour to 45 minutes. So it's extremely hairy. And that's what I was doing earlier today. Jean was at the Day of Remembrance. Normally, she would be with me. Um, so I would set up about three or four, but I have other friends. I, I, I set his cameras up today, too, and he puts out like 13, okay? Um, and video and video too i do stills and they do video and but we work together so you can you uh there's sound activated triggers and there's timers and you, you can buy very expensive ones too and uh, but you got to be media you right. have to be with a reputable media organization to do that so so it's 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 a lot of pressure it's a lot of pressure and like today the, it looked like it was going to rain and it did so the mm -hmm. cameras are drenched so you got to put bags around them to protect them. Sometimes cameras, hand warmers, hand hand, warmers. And, and so sometimes they can get destroyed, not actually by the exhaust. That's what you would think. You would think the rocket exhaust would kill the camera, but that is generally not the case. What happens is the weather kills the camera, the rain and the wind, and it can, the rain can seep in. And so you got to put a bag around it. That's why you saw the bags in the cameras. Mm -hmm. And it, it, you know, it, it poured here. It absolutely poured here. So we may get a chance to reset tomorrow. So it, it's, you know, it's great to be there, but it's also a lot of work. And you have to be endlessly flexible when you are a rocket photographer. Mm -hmm. you, you, it doesn't go by your convenience. It goes by the company's convenience. You've got to constantly be looking. And so it oh, helps well. to be retired, I'll tell you that. <laughs> and we know we're lucky. And we know we're lucky. Uh, we're always we're lucky and grateful with what we get to see. Mm -hmm. One of the uh, one of the comments in the chat coming from one of our uh, NSS uh, officers, Dave Stewart, he said, uh, you know, it's a great photography and it's, it's about relating space to the public. And and I think that, you know, that's one of the things that excited me about having this presentation is you know, the, you know, I, I, like I said, I've only been to a few launches and I've shared the photos with friends they are like, wow, they, you know, they, 
it's still something you don't it, if they've never seen one you can't conceive it so i i just think it's uh you know how do you feel about the the reaction you get are you you when when you share these with the public are you you know it, it's how about with kids because that, that's what we're really talking about too getting kids interested in in stem careers so it's a you know it's just a fascinating thing well that's why i'm glad we, we really i mean there's a lot of launches and i'm glad for that but one thing that made a smile brings a smile to my face is as you're lining highway one uh washington avenue which is the main thoroughfare through titusville it's good to see the crowds out again no matter what time of day or night it reminds me of the shuttle days when people line up i mean you they're right. literally every every free spot is covered with cars so people can see it and we see a lot of kids out and that you're right that's very good even see. for starlink launches <laughs> we've had like cost. about 30 <laughs> yeah. people still show up but yeah the outreach is really important that's basically how i got started i got started talking to kids and adult groups at astronomy clubs i i talk about mars and i use mars to get people interested in space and science because i'm a scientist that's what i that's what i do and i i can talk to second graders and i can talk to adults and it's almost the same talk and I really like talking to the kids. They ask a lot of great questions and they're really interested. Mm -hmm. And so um, we love doing outreach. That, that's the thing. We love doing outreach. And I love to take questions. When I give a talk, I always let people ask questions during the talk. Mm -hmm. You know, this is completely different where we can only talk, uh, interact with people at the end. And we I mean, we right. don't even see the reaction and, and at the show, here, but we love, we love to do that. And we both have different talks. And at the shuttle Atlanta, sometimes I had a six year old boy that was there a few weeks ago and he asked questions that were so advanced that even more adults would never ask anything like that. And I asked his mother, I said, wow, he's smarter sounding than most of the people up here. And she said, he doesn't watch cartoons. He watches NASA TV from the minute he gets up until the time he goes to bed. <laughs> yeah, are you smarter than the fifth grader? You know, the fifth graders, they know a lot more than the adults. It's, yeah, it's just yeah, but we, we love doing outreach. So we love doing outreach. That's I'm great. happy when I'm doing outreach. I like to give back. You right. know, NASA gives us a lot, uh, but they expect something in return and they expect outreach. They really do. They look at what you do. And we love talking to people. Mm -hmm. So, you know, like I said, if anybody's interested, you know, and they can sponsor us, then we, you know, we, we love to give lectures. Great. Yeah. Absolutely. Let me see if there are any questions that came in. Uh, I'll, there's one from uh, James, who, uh, and I guess with everything that's happening there, I guess uh, I'm not sure if the question really uh, applies anymore, but he said, is there one particular season where you can see more launches than others? But it seems like they're all, all the whole year now, right? They're like once a week, you know, we had five launches in January mm -hmm. and we have five, we have five, maybe seven launches this month because this one that got scrubbed today is going to go tomorrow. Then there's another Starlink launch day after that. And then Astra, the new company at pad 46 at the edge, they might launch this month. I think it's going to slip into, into February. Okay. But anyway, you're talking about one or two a week. Last week we had two launches. So we have 31 launches from uh, the, the Space Coast last year, a record, okay? 31 launches, SpaceX had 31 between the two coasts, ULA had a, had, had a couple at each coast, and altogether 31. So you know what, almost any week you show up- It doesn't matter what season You, you could right? see, it doesn't, it doesn't, and you know, it doesn't depend on the season. It all depends on orbital mechanics. That's what it depends on. Right. People say, oh, why can't we launch at a more convenient time? Why is it 3 a.m.? <laughs> you know, it's just, people don't understand that it does not your convenience. It's what mathematics say that to get that, that, that rocket, that satellite to its target. The space and that's station. when it launches. Yeah, we'd like it to be convenient right. too, but. You have to understand. That's why I say you got to be endlessly flexible mm -hmm. and always plan. If you're coming here, if you're going to be here a week, plan the see the rocket launch at the beginning of your week, not the end, because if it scrubs like today, right. then you have a chance. Oh, maybe you could see it tomorrow. Maybe you could see it the next day. I mean, we met people at the park today. We, we didn't go far away because I had a hunch it wouldn't it wouldn't it wouldn't launch today. But we still met a lot of people. We did outreach. This evening, both of us did outreach at those public parks, just talking to people. Yeah. And I told them, are you going to be here tomorrow? Because that's the next opportunity. And if you miss that, well, you could see the one on Saturday. It's so 6, 11 PM, always plan <laughs> right. the beginning of your vacation for launch. That's good advice. 
A uh, couple more questions. I know we're at 10.30. Uh, we still have- We, a, we, we can answer know, as but, long but, but as you want. I know, but it's We, we like doing that. We, I know, just I don't uh, want to two more. I then. don't want to keep you up. Yeah, <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> uh, I, I thought it was great going into the VAB. I, I did an internship at the Kennedy Space Center way back in the summer of 1980 uh, okay. and uh, got to see, of course, got to see Columbia and, and spent a lot of time actually in the VAB. And they had, uh, you know, the solid rocket boosters were there at the time. And I remember when we went in as staff, uh, you actually had to give your badge up. They, you know, they, because yes, you of do. the fuel of the solid rockets, uh, you know, they didn't want to take any chances. And, you, you know, kind of like if you're going into the, a mine where they take yes. your, uh, your records. To identify you. in there. Yeah. Did they yeah. do things like that when you went in because the solid yeah, rockets it, were there? It's the same in a chemical factory because right. they need to keep track of who's in the building if right. something happens. But they don't do that when we do when we go in the VAB. They don't do that. We don't have to do that. Well, we they used to do, to do it. To. It's a little bit less now. Right. But, okay. Um, but if you go like to see Orion in the O and C, you have to. You have to. You have to give up. Uh, you get a badge. You give something, and then they give it to you. And then when you go out, you, you give it back an ID. Mm -hmm. So uh, yeah, they have to. They have to keep track. When I'm in a chemical factory, when you're right. when you're there, they again they need to know you're there. So if there's an emergency, they can account for everybody. Yeah. Right. Right. So one last question, and what are you looking forward to most in 2022? I bet I know. <laughs> well, there's Falcon Heavies. Well, there's SLS and there's right. Falcon Heavies. Psyche mission, I didn't get to mention, going to the metallic asteroid. That'll launch on a Falcon Heavy in, in early August. So, uh, you know, SLS would definitely number one. Last year was the Mars rover Perseverance. Mm -hmm. This year, definitely uh, SLS. We have more crew launches, but it'll be the first one and it has to work. Right. You know, right. it, it has can't to work. not succeed. Right. It has to work mm -hmm. because if this doesn't work, then we don't have Artemis two and Artemis three, and we're not going to the moon with astronauts. So it's got to work. And the other thing is Vulcan Centaur. Going to look forward to seeing that, and um, and we're going to look forward to seeing more samples collected from Perseverance rover. It can collect about forty. It has forty four tubes, forty three, forty four tubes. And so it's going to continue that. It's got about six so far. Um, so, so we're looking forward to that. More helicopter flights. Right. And um, I'm sure I'm missing something. But the <laughs> SLS would be number one for sure. But we know we're lucky. But there's so many <laughs> other things that, you know, you got to hope everything succeeds. Yeah. Absolutely. No. Well, thank you, Bert. Oh, well, thank you, Gene. Thank you, Ken. It was just a, a fascinating presentation. And I, I, I think it exceeded my expectations because oh, I, the, the, photo, the photography is just spectacular and, and your, your impressions and stories. Uh, we, we really do thank you for uh, coming out tonight. And, and uh, I know it was, was kind of iffy because of the, the schedule, you're worrying about the yeah. launch tonight. <laughs> Yeah. So hopefully you'll see a great one, uh, a great launch tomorrow. But yeah. uh, thank you again. And, uh, you know, I, I, I also want to thank my colleagues, uh, Fred Becker, uh, for doing all his tech support for these space forums and my other colleague, Larry Ahern, in helping us plan and organize all these. So uh, let me just share my screen one last time, everybody. Mm -hmm. And uh, I will close out the presentation. And again, thanking everybody for coming out tonight. So we really appreciate, uh, especially Gene and Ken. Uh, again, a fabulous presentation. Check out their website, spaceupclose.com. Uh, and uh, in full disclosure, I have quite a few of Gene's um, COVID masks. Uh, so, <laughs> oh, yeah, we forgot to yeah, mention yeah, yeah. them. Yes, yes. So, <laughs> Thank uh, you, George. Yes. Uh, You're the, a good I, supporter. <laughs> I, I got a question for you before, before you go. Uh, sure. Will this be you're going to put this whole thing online for the for the public to see? Okay. Yes, this will we will be putting this on our our NSS uh, uh, YouTube channel. Okay. So, so you'll be able to share this with anybody. Yes, that's right. Okay. Yeah, send us the link when it's available. We had uh, a lot of fun. Thank you. It was a big absolutely. challenge. But we and we had so a lot much. of nice comments at the bottom, and some of them we recognize as our friends. And Robert Law, who's from Scotland, who always follows us, which is very oh, nice. Very nice. 
Well, yeah, thanks yeah, everybody for joining he's us tonight. He's, he's doing, doing an morning. overnight launch. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, I actually saw a comment in there about my nice book, my nice pe uh, photo there, a painting of Anna Fisher behind me. So. <laughs> oh yeah, she just left. She was at the visitor complex this week. Her only appearance was for five days, and her last day was yesterday. So that's she's only here uh, one time at Kennedy, and the yeah. rest she's in Houston. And uh, I want to say too. I had to delete a bunch of slides. We we could have shown you even oh, more. Oh, I am it's sure. Just a sliver. I've shown you a. We've shown oh, you we a just, sliver. I said we have to get rid of that one and that so one. So we yeah. had. It just would like to show more, but you know, I think I think we showed enough, but yeah. we do have more. <laughs> I'm sure you do. Again. You've got an amazing collection. Yeah. Well, thank, thank you. you so much again, and I just want to thank all of our attendees tonight. Thank you for joining us. Uh, I know we have some people in other time zones. So have a great day uh, tomorrow uh, and a great evening and also a great weekend and wishing everyone staying safe. And we'll see you again in two weeks when we do the, the membership town hall. So again, everybody, thank you so much. Uh, have a great evening. All right. Thank you. Bye-bye. Yeah. Hold the trolls. Oh, oh. they're gone. Yeah. Yeah. Again, Gene Kent. Wow. Fabulous. Thank you. Thank, thank you, you so much.